Um, so I'm going to talk about a library I've been working on for the past two years now. Uh, it's Lexi, it's a C++ parsing DSL library. So it's there to, it, it, you can use it right now. Um, it's essentially syntax sugar for a recursive descent parser. This means you have full control over our branching decisions, over backpacking, and you can pass it into your own data structures. So you have the flexibility and control of a handwritten parser without any of the boilerplate. Um, to use Lexi, you need three things. You define a grammar, you create an input, and you call a parse action. So let's walk through an example. We want to pass um, HTML color codes or CSS color codes using this hex notation into this struct. The first step is to define the grammar. Uh, grammar in Lexi consists of productions, which are structs, um, with a special rule member that defines how the production is passed. So in this case, a color is a hash sign followed by three channels, which is another production uh, which simply passes an integer consisting of two hex digits. Uh, rules can produce values. In this case, the integer rule produces a unit 80. So we specify a callback that defines how that unit 80 is transformed. So in this case, we just forward it which means that now the channel production will produce a unit 80, which we then use all three to construct our color. The second step is to create an input. We can pass a string literal, or we can read a file, or we can uh, use an iterator range. For the last two, you need to specify the encoding. Uh, Lexi supports Unicode. Uh, or you can pass command line arguments. Finally, we call a pass action. The most common one is pass, which simply uh, takes the input, an error callback, and the entry production, and will pass it into um, into the object. In this case, we have an error there, so we get an error message, but we still get an incomplete value. Um, Lexi is able to recover from that error a bit and still produce a final value. We can also ignore all the value callbacks and simply get a pass tree. We can then inter iterate over that pass tree or simply visualize it for debugging purposes. Um, if we want to really see what's going on, we can also call trace. And this um, goes ahead and uh, reports everything that Lexi is doing during parsing code. So it gives you all the events that fire, all the errors it reported, any error recovery you did, and so on. It's really useful. We just, because it's some DSL, you want to really figure out what's going on. It's important to note that Lexi is not declarative. Um, so if you have the regex, for example, A star A, this matches arbitrary many A's followed by another A. But the equivalent code in Lexi, um, using the while rule, does not match anything because Lexi is syntax sugar for a handwritten parser. So it will simply do uh, try and match A as often as possible and then match another one, which obviously will never succeed. Similarly, the regex A or AB matches A or AB. However, the Lexi choice um, only matches A. This is again because Lexi doesn't do anything behind your back. You tell it to match A or AB and it first tries to match A and then it will never um, actually try and match AB. This is because um, Lexi has explicit backtracking, so whenever Lexi needs to make um, a decision, it uses a branch condition. Um, this can be tokens like literal or ASCII, which is essentially um, one token look ahead, but also atomic uh, conditions, like for example, you can explicitly introduce backtracking by saying peak this rule and see where that matches, uh, and then you can combine the two using the shift operator. So for example, when we want to pass an HTML color or this function called syntax, we have to introduce um, conditions. Uh, the condition for the hex color is the hash time, and the condition for the uh, function call is RGB, and then we can plug them together into a choice, and now Lexi knows exactly how to make this decision. Other features, um, Lexi has automatic error recovery, um, as we've already seen with the color, and in many cases, for example, you want to pass function arguments, you have a parenthesized list of things, and when there's an item er there, Lexi can simply discard it and move on to the next argument automatically without you having to do anything. Um, this is really useful, but you can also customize it. Um, you can introduce a try rule that says, if there's an error, use this code to recover. Um, you can even, because not everything is um, designed to work with the DSL really well, you can even mix in um, handwritten using the scan rule. This will then invoke a custom function um, to pass, do the actual passing by hand. It's completely transparent with the rest of the library, so all the past generation, all the tracing just works. You can't tell from the outside whether or not uh, it's using DSL scan. Um, you can query Unicode character properties at compile time if you want to. Um, you can pass byte input, so your big little endianness integer specific bits or this classic pattern of there's a type, there's a length, and then pass that many bytes. Um, I'm currently using it in my thesis to pass an actual programming language, so it has support for keywords and identifiers, operator precedence um, in a really convenient DSL, so you don't have to worry about how to actually like uh, pass it and so on. And the, it's currently in beta. The first non-beta release will come this month. Um, all the demos in the talk are interactive, and you can find on the URL, you can also find like an online playground where you can try it out. 
And if you follow me on Twitter, I will also tweet out the slides. Thank you.